Hello again out there, YouTube land. Lumps the Clown once again, here from the Clown Cave, newly established. So I'm really psyched about that shit right there. Got my own little shrine for all my video games, all my nerd essentials around here, all my juggalo shits out here. Either case, though, today I accomplished a big achievement. I was able to complete my first blog, complete with pictures. I was able to post that up on my blog site. Which is pretty badass in itself. It took me about 10 hours to fix that shit up. But moving away from that subject, when I was a kid, I walked into a video game store and I picked up two games. One was Project Overkill, the other was Clock Tower, both for PlayStation 1. Now I checked out Project Overkill and that game was badass. I was able to get in there, just murder a bunch of motherfuckers, it was missions. Yeah, you followed your own path, which is pretty cool. Reminiscent of other games like Supernova for the SNES, things like that. But nothing prepared me for the evil that was coming up, which is Clock Tower for PlayStation 1. Later learned that it was released around October 1st, 1997, North America. And the cover art is what caught my eye. I mean, I don't have the manual on my disc anymore, but that disc right there, the art is enough to get your attention. This is produced by Human Entertainment. Here's the back. Let's see if we get a good light in here. But that in itself was enough to get my attention. I was true. I was intrigued. I had no idea what I was in for. Back in the 90s, there was a ton of point-and-click games out there. A lot of folks may remember uh, stuff that was put out by Lucas Arts. Their names escape me right now. One involved a motorcycle gang member uh, who was trying to get out of the life. Uh, there was another one with a little boy, something about an island, don't recall. Now, Clock Tower strays away from other survival horror games of the genre, and the fact that it is point and click, it, um, but what's really terrifying is that you're stuck in these buildings, and you're trying to evade the Scissor Man. You have a choice between two characters. One's Jennifer, uh, who is from the very first Clock Tower released in Japan, the first Fear for the Super Famicom. And then there's Helen, her adoptive guardian. Now, a couple of things, either one, there's multiple endings in this game, but bottom line, a few things can happen. Either Jennifer and Helen are successful in defeating Scissor Man and sending him back to hell, or Scissor Man escapes somehow, or he ends up killing everybody, one or the other. But either case, so I'm going to show off the disc a little bit. See, now, when you pop this thing out... You get a really cool picture of the Scissor Man right here. Now that is badass. I would totally get that tatted on me, no problem at all. But when I first played the game, utterly scared the shit out of me. I had no idea. Uh, I guess I ended up playing as Jennifer, and I end up running into the building. I try to hide in the bathroom stall, and that fucker finds me. I didn't have the foresight to click the mop next to me. Well. Jennifer ends up getting on her knees after that door flies open, and I got decapitated my very first time playing. Shit gave me nightmares for weeks, but it's all I could think about. So ultimately, I went out there, threw down my money, got myself a copy. This is the same copy that I have owned since that day, and it's a very big part of my collection. I used to own Clock Tower 2, The uh, Struggle Within, but unfortunately... I ended up trading it off. Hopefully I'll be reacquiring it soon, but in this case I'm going to be showing off this game. The prologue, I will give you a fair warning, is very heavy on its text dialogue. I'll be walking through that, read it off, so folks won't have to endure it twice, because in order to play as Jennifer, you have to talk to Harris twice in the hallway. Um, in this case, I'm only going to talk to him once. We'll get the Helen thing going, but if to play Jennifer again, just hit him twice. But let's go ahead and pop this fucker in. Let's see what it's all about. All right, so we got her all hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and play Clock Tower, 1997, Human Entertainment. All right, so this is just the typical piracy warning: don't copy the game. And ASCII Entertainment. Now that's pretty cool. I haven't heard from those guys in a while. Alright, uh, that's Jennifer from Clock Tower First Fear for the Super Famicom. She's one of the main protagonists in this game. Uh, 
Oh, I love that music. Now that is one of a couple different backgrounds you can get. But during this, we're just going to go ahead and sit back and we're going to watch the intro. This kind of gives you a rundown from first fear to now. Sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. The trail of terror stretches across Europe, from Norway to England. There it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We have to go there and look around, or we'll never solve the mystery of scissor men. Got to be joking. It's way too dangerous. As long as he's alive, we're not safe anywhere, guys. One after another, <gasps> the horrifying murders continue. <gasps> we'll make it through this game of murder alive. <laughs> Clock Tower. Now that was epic. Now, the beginning, if you're wondering what that purple big thing is chasing after Jennifer up the cliffs, that was one of the uh, twin brothers. There was Danny and Bobby. And I believe that was Danny, according to a couple different accounts. Why he was a giant purple baby, I got no idea. Let's go ahead and give this thing a start. Alright, so I'm going to roll through the main menu here real quick. That's new game, which what we're going to be doing. Continue. For a scenario that you had recently played, it'll just start you right back up again. We had here data load, uh, which will give you a choice between the three different save files that you could select. Uh, this is your sound, stereo, monaural, you name it. Ending list. Now this is interesting. Each character has about four or five different endings. I'm not going to be getting all of them through my playthrough. I'm going to attempt to get the best ending and then at the end of the series provide a link to some videos that show the other endings in case you're interested. And the pamphlet here, this contains the story of Clock Tower and it also contains secrets in that. I'm not going to click on that because I actually have some save files in here. I don't want to spoil it for anybody just yet. We'll go in there later though, I promise. Alright, let's start this shit. Alright, that's Prologue, Samuel Barton. Professor Samuel Barton. Professor Barton? Professor Barton? Professor Barton? What on earth are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. All right, there you go. That's Jennifer and Helen. And Jennifer was some sort of a hypnotic spell that Professor Barton had placed on her. Right, so the clock tower murders. The mass murder of over 10 victims in this case. How intriguing. Jennifer Simpson, only one of two survivors. I have to get information out of her for future profiling materials. 
Now, normally you can click on this, and this is where you would discover the game's very first hint, hint number one. Um, I had already gotten it in a previous game. Man, they're scattered throughout. I'm not exactly sure where. I've never found them all. A giant pair of scissors is on the desk. They are a replica of the scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. They are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. Alright, so when I first played this game, I had no idea what that was all about. So that was pretty cool, though. Didn't know what evil I was in for. My laboratory. Lately, I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Hmm, the staff is still here. As you can imagine, this is Professor Barton's office and his staff members as well. Now, you cannot leave this office without completing certain objectives. If you try, he'll say something to the effect that I've got more work to do. Let's go ahead and check it out just for fun. Let's go ahead and pretend to leave. There is still something I need to do in here. Alright, so basically there's some certain items you have to click on. The first thing you want to click on is this statue. A statue. It is cold. One of the items found at the scene of the clock tower murders. It seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. Beth. Professor, Helen left a few minutes ago and she looked really angry. Hmm. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. Uh, yes. Yes, you're right. Scissor Man's Rubber Mask, a kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Alright, next you want to click on this desk over here. This happens to be Harris that I discussed earlier. Harris's desk. Clipped out articles of the Clock Tower story are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. Ooh, ominous. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to the, uh... Argyle sweater guy. This is Danny. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an appointment for an interview? It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? Huh. I guess this is the way... I guess they want to sensationalize this scissor man who really doesn't even exist. Scissor man. It'd be cool if you were real. Huh? Or, um, just a joke. Alright, that about wraps it up for this room. Let's go ahead and get on out of here now. Alright, next up is the infamous Harris, and here he hangs out. Uh, now, I had mentioned earlier that if you wanted to talk, play as Helen, you would talk to him once. Now, if you want to play as Jennifer, you'd talk to him twice. So we're just going to go ahead and talk to him once. We're going to go ahead and do Helen's scenario next. Oh, Professor. A newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first floor. Oh, thank you. And that's it. If you want to play as Helen, just go ahead and talk to him one time. Alright, we'll go ahead and see what these fuckers want. Now I discovered something interesting. If you try to dick around and try to go to any other floor besides the one that he talks about, he'll scold you. Check this out. There's no reason to go to the third floor. I hate to waste time. What a crotchety old bastard. Alright, let's go down to the first floor. Alright, here we go. Nolan. Oh, Professor, I am the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell, and this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. 
Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? I can't say anything for sure yet because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh, do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? Oh, um, nothing really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you're going to say. That monster she was talking about, the Scissor Man, and whether he really exists or not. That's it. That's right. That is what our readers want to know. Because the existence of this Scissor Man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensationalized the whole thing. Ouch, that hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. There's something I must be attending to. Ah, uh, well, okay. I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't be as much helped as you as hoped. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the Clock Tower murders. He is supposed to be a young boy about 10 years old. Alright, we won't fuck with Professor Barton this time. We'll just go right to the second floor. As you gather, the texting and the button press in this game can be kind of frustrating and hard to get used to. It's kind of hard to narrate it as I sit here, but I'm giving it my best shot. Alright, we're going to go ahead and move back along to that laboratory. Or laboratory, same smell, I don't care. Alright, so it appears everyone's out of here except for Harris. Now you'll want to talk to him first. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yes, he's waiting in the therapy room. Alright, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the statue here. And this is where one of your very first important choices come from. Uh, the first one being either Helen or Jennifer. This is going to be where the statue gets sent. And that's going to become important uh, before the second scenario. Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head librarian at the Metropolitan Library. Yes, but there was that old butler at the Barrow's Mansion named Rick. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Ask Harris, yes or no. Now, I mentioned earlier that I want to go ahead and play as Helen, and for the next scenario after that, we're going to be playing the library. So I'm going to go ahead and say no here, and that means that Professor Barton will be sending that to Sullivan over there at the library. All right, then. I'll have Professor Sullivan at the Metropolitan Library take a look. Okay, that's that. I should probably go to the therapy room. All right, so uh, for the first time playing through, you want to make sure to write down your choices there where you send that statue. Because if you do not, then you're going to end up getting the worst ending. Because you'll send one of the guys to the next scenario, and they're not going to be able to find the statue. Therefore, it becomes it's considered lost, and it doesn't matter what character you play as, it's the worst ending you can get. Let's go ahead and run to that therapy room.
act like we give a shit about our job, so. Alright, now she doesn't introduce herself properly uh, in the dialogue, but this is Kay, and this uh, little kid right here is Edward. Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I am an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I am Edward's guardian. Edward? I thought he completely lost all his memory from the shock. Does he remember his name? No. I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. Now, since this is our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward? Now, I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what happened. Er, yes. Well then, let's get started. Alright, and after that it gives you an opportunity to save your data in one of three slots that's created for the save uh, memory on your memory card. You'll want to make sure you have anywhere from three to five slots freed up on your memory card in order to save on this, before it even start, because nobody wants to grind through that shit twice. I mean, the, the prologue is definitely not the highlight of the game. It's where important choices are made, gr granted, but other than that, it's just really hard to get through. But either case, though, that was the prologue. Uh, Professor Samuel L. Barton, uh, we went ahead and chose the Helen scenario by talking to, uh, to that Harris guy only once, and then we chose to send the statue over there to the library. So we're going to go ahead and pick up for that scenario next, and thanks for watching this first part of the series. Lumps the Clown, out.